What's going on, everybody? What's happening, to everybody? I'm talking to my slice and dice and slice and dice. Dang! Peace and blessings to everybody watching. It's your boy Cardo. Back at it again with another video. But the thing is about that, I'm not the only one who made it to another day. I got Slice and Dice game with me. I got some of the few chosen ones out there. We all here. Since we all here, how about we all smash that like button? Go ahead, get to it. Follow me on my socials. The links is in the description. Subscribe to your boy. You won't be disappointed, please believe me. They should already be out. They should already be out. Y'all know what I'm talking about, s &D gang. Get them out, get the swords out. Y'all know how we do every video. We slice and dice with these scriptures. Every single video, we back and points up with what? Our Heavenly Father's truth. The word, it's only right. Sharpen them up good. Let's do something else today. Come on, y'all know the routine, man. We got to do this every day. Y'all ain't did it yet? If you ain't did it yet, come on. The Most High God didn't have to do this. But he did. So let's thank the Most High. Our Almighty Heavenly Father. For what though? For allowing us to be here. Today, yes, sir, indeed. We got to be thankful, y'all, every day, man. He didn't have to do that. Now I got to talk my talk, man. I got to do this. It's something I must do. Every video I got to, because every day, it's a possibility that we may have a new Slice and Dice gang member. You might be ready to join Cardo TV. I don't want to waste your time, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you know what you're in for if you make that decision. You know what I'm saying? Listen up real quick. See, if you subscribe to this channel, you ready to repent. You ready to live a life full of repentance. The Most High God gave us laws, statutes, and commandments to obey. You about ready to be obedient. You also ready to grow spiritually. That spiritual growth, that's where it's at. That word called faith, you ready to keep it strong, standing 10 toes, standing on business, all the way into the end. You got gifts and talents as well. You got to know that. God gave them to you before you were born, gave you a whole purpose before we brought you out here. You ready to use them like you never did before, serving other people, making this world a much better, much more positive place. Basically, if you subscribe to this channel, you're ready to be a light in this dark world. Come on, we need some more light out here. It's dark. So if you're ready, I say if you're ready, stop playing games and come join Slice and Dice Gang Bars. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the channel. I am so happy that you can make it today. I hope you subscribe. I got a question for you. Chosen ones, I got a question for you. What are you doing with your freedom in Christ? I hope it's living in the Holy Spirit. Let me ask you again. What are you doing with your freedom in Christ? Well, let me tell you what I first mean. Well, let me first tell you what I mean by that question. So you got to understand that we were only set free. We got this freedom because of what Christ did, right? He died for our sins. He gave us that victory. You accepted that. You believe that. You truly believe what Christ did, that we got this freedom because the Most High God sent the Messiah to die for our sins. You accepted that freedom. So now that you accepted the freedom, now that you're free, what are you doing with it? 
Because now that you accepted that, it's it's more of a resistance against returning to the things of this world. More of a resistance to return into the things of the flesh. You free now. Why go back? He set you free. He died for us. Come on now. That's out of love. So now that he did that and we accept that, it's certain things that we must do. And I'm talking about living in that Holy Spirit. God gave it to us. Right? Now we get to use it. Now we get to allow that Holy Spirit to overflow as much as possible. But what are we doing with this freedom? Let me bring a scripture out real quick. It tells us in Galatians. And let us not be weary. And let us not be weary in, in well doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So we got to continue to do good. We got to continue to operate with this Holy Spirit. The scripture just said that all of the things that we do, operating with the Holy Spirit, continuing to do these good works, being set apart, we will be rewarded. It's a huge victory at the end. But are we keeping the faith? Are we staying obedient? What are we doing with this freedom? Right? So it's like we're talking about the Holy Spirit. Do y'all know the fruits? We're going to really dive into the fruits today. Because if we're going to operate with the Holy Spirit, with this freedom, we got to keep the fruits in check. We got to know what the fruits are. We got to know what to do with them. And we have to continue to do them for it just said in that scripture. Come on now. We're going to be rewarded. We're going to be blessed. But honestly, y'all, we should really do it out of love. He died for us, right? He set us free, right? He showed us that love. We can't give it back in return. I think we can. Slice and dice, gang. I think we can. Right? We've been to talk about it. Now get the swords back out. Get the swords back out. So we got nine points to talk about since there are nine fruits of the spirit that we're going to dive into. Let me name them real quick. We got love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All of those things sound amazing to me. It sounds like righteousness to me. It sounds like good works to me. And that Holy Spirit is going to allow us to continue doing all of these things effectively, strong, for God deserves it. Slice and dice game, we finna get it in. The scriptures tell us in John, a new command I give you, love one another as i loved you so you must love one another so the first one we're talking about that first fruit is love treating each other with kindness compassion respect just like christ loves us right we're supposed to be examples of christ everything christ did was out of love but guess what he was still persecuted for it since we're supposed to be examples of christ since we're following him, since we're supposed to be showing this fruit of love, we got to do the same. And it's nothing new under the sun. Christ showed that love, right? Provided so many miracles, cured the, uh, cured the sick, cured the blind, rose the dead. He did all of those things and was still persecuted, was still hated. We're going to have the same treatment. Nothing new under the sun, y'all. Also in the scriptures. It hated Christ first. So it's going to hate us too. It's going to hate us too. But that don't mean we stop. That don't mean we change our heart because of what other people are doing since we decide that we want to do it. You got to understand the world that you're living in. It's dark and evil. Very dark and evil, man. A lot of people not operating out of love. A lot of people out here are operating with that hate jealousy praying for people's downfall not trying to support one another satan likes that satan does not like love he's the opposite of love he's about hate chaos right some of y'all probably asking i show love all the time 
I'm kind to people all the time. I help people all the time. But they don't give it back to me in return. I know. It's called you being taken advantage of. But you got to understand what God looks at. He looks at the heart. He looks at the heart and the intentions of people. He see what they doing. He see what you doing. You doing things out of love and they treating you otherwise. So that's okay. You don't have to hang with them. You don't have to continue to give all of your energy to them. Right? There's plenty of things, y'all, that we do out of love. I know a lot of y'all chosen ones can relate to the sense of you be this light for people. You give so much of your energy to people because you are like a magnet. People gradually come to you, good and bad energies. So a lot of your energy is poured out. And it's a lot of energy vampires out here just wanting to take from you and not give back. But you still continue to do things out of love. You still encourage, you still help. Because God created you like that way. Don't change your heart. Don't change your heart. God gonna bless you for this. And he see what they doing. But you have to also understand that you can most definitely love from a distance as well. Don't don't get it messed up when I say this. Don't don't make it seem like that I'm trying to tell you to consistently go out of your way in doing things. And it's okay to go out of your way and help each other, of course. But it's like if you feel like you're doing this and you're not getting anything back from it from these people, come on, it's supposed to be working both ways, y'all. You got to cut them off. You have to cut them off. And then that also shows you the true heart of other people when you show this love and kindness, right? Because now you get to see how they act. You get to see how their heart is. And if it's not giving that same energy, you got to go. Also in the scriptures, you can't be unequally yoked. So you doing things out of love, you being this light, you being righteous. That don't go with darkness. That don't go with unrighteousness, right? Can't be unequally yoked. So the word is telling us you can't be with that. You can't be... You can't be hanging with those types of people, but we always consistently have that heart to help each other, to show people love, to give this good news, right? To let people know how much Christ loved us, telling people what he did so that, that, that now that they can have an opportunity to receive this hope, they can have the opportunity to go to God themselves to get to know God in Christ themselves because they hear this good news. That's what we do as believers in Christ, y'all. That's what God is looking at. We got a responsibility now. Now that we are free, that's our responsibility to love and help each other come on this side. We don't want to be the only ones, that's selfish, right? Yes, sir, indeed, come on now. The scriptures tell us in Philippians, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. So this leads to the second fruit. And that's joy. So we got to always choose to rejoice in the Lord always. Finding joy in his presence and the blessings that he provides. He's always doing that. But how much are you seeking his presence, y'all? You see, it's a lot of things out here that is brought out to take your energy. That is brought out to lead you away from the most high God. No, 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 with this freedom, with this Holy Spirit, we should be doing everything in our power, trying to embrace his presence, trying to be thankful, right? Of all of the blessings that he's given us. You see, the blessings that God gives us is nothing like the blessing that the world gives. You know, Satan, because this is his kingdom. So he, he liked to make things look sweet, sound sweet, so that he can rule you in. Eventually, he going to come back and collect. He's a liar. He deceives you. He's a deceiver, right? It even says in the scripture, he is like a wolf in sheep's clothing. He can make the, he can make things look so sweet like an angel of light, but that's not the case. It's a trick, y'all, to get you to stay in bondage with your sin. To get you to stay in this dark place. It ain't none of that. If you are continuing to seek God in his presence so that you can feel this joy, that's where the real joy is going to come from. God's presence, not the world's presence. See, you is free from the world. Right? You got to grow closer to God. 
he gonna grow closer to you also in the scriptures but it's like what are you doing now that you are set free what are you doing come on what ways are you growing closer to god we're talking about operating with the holy spirit right how much are you reading your word how often are you meditating in these scriptures not just like reading it i'm talking about studying it taking your time getting into context so you can really try to understand what god is telling you come on y'all you know god looks at every detail there's nothing too small when it come to god like he sees you like when you try to be creative when you go out of your way doing things to try to grow closer to him y'all like reading your word like praying like for example it's nothing too small you driving in your car and you just talking to god with the radio off thank you god for allowing me to be able to be mobile from get to point a to point b thank you for your protection he sees these things y'all and every time you decide to do things like that he gonna be more aware of you he gonna get closer to you and then when he's doing that that's when you receive that real joy y'all you can't get joy from this world like you can get from the most high right so what things are you doing are you going out of your way are you trying to get i'm talking about creative in the sense of things that you can do to grow closer to god we all got our own unique lives y'all so don't look at other people and see what they're doing talk to god get to know him for yourself right i'm telling y'all that's where the real joy is gonna come I know it may look bad for you right now. I don't know who I'm talking to. You may feel like there's no joy, no hope at all right now in your situation. What are you doing? What are you relying on? What are you thinking about? Who are you hanging with? Because that plays a part as well. Because when you're really on this path, y'all, seeking God, growing closer to God, trying to stay on your purpose, a lot of people hate you for it. They don't like you for that. So they try to, they try to come in and get you off of that path. Just because they not doing it. Just because they don't want to seek the most high God. They don't want to face their demons. So they look at you and hate on you for it. Don't let them destroy your peace. You keep that. By embracing God's presence as much as possible. Alright? It tells us in John. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. You see what I'm saying? Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So this leads to the third one, and that's peace. So we got to understand, y'all, we will be more peaceful when we understand that the Most High God is in control of all things. You got to have that type of trust. That's the only way you're going to have that real true peace. Right? Trusting and understanding that the Most High God is in control of everything. And the Most High God does everything out of love for you, right? So since he's the one in control, since God is love. Come on, now you got to keep your peace no matter the circumstances. Don't start to fear. Don't start to have doubt. What it say in that scripture also? It said, do not be troubled, do not be afraid. Right? This world wants to fear you. This world wants to distract you right so it's just like again i tell you what are you focused on you see it's a lot of people out here fear mongering fear mongering stop watching videos like that of people just telling you certain things like oh the world is about to end this is about to happen this is about to happen oh what are we gonna do that's fear mongering man and they only doing that for a couple reasons just so they can make you afraid get in your mind they all doing it for attention. They all doing it for money. Don't pay attention to that. Focus on the most high God knowing he's in control. I'm going to tell you again, you were set free. You were set free and you don't have a spirit of fear. You got that Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit that gives you power. Also in the scriptures. Gives you power. So take control of this power, y'all. Take effort. There's certain things that we got to do because we got free will. Right? Right? We got free will. We are in control of our peace, y'all, believe it or not. We are in control of our peace because we can do things that helps our thoughts. We got to do things that transform this mind. Also in the scriptures, it tells you. 
you will be transformed by the renewal of your mind. So when you renew this mind and make it think and have it stamp in up here that God is in control of everything and that the Most High God loves you, what did we say in the beginning? He sent his only son. This was his only son to set us free. That gave us the victory right there, man. You got to keep that energy moving forward. You have to, y'all. Satan, he's going to do everything in his power every single day to try to destroy your peace. He's going to use people. He may attack you in your dreams because he wants you to stop. He don't want you set free. He don't want you using your gifts and talents. He don't want you on purpose. It's a threat to his kingdom. He like chaos, remember? He like fear, remember? So he used people. That's why it's okay, chosen ones, to be set apart. That's how you're going to keep your peace. It's how I keep mine. I'm all right with being alone. I'm all right with that. I don't have those distractions. I don't have that narcissistic abuse to deal with anymore. I'm focused on my purpose, on my mission. I'm focused on keeping my peace. I'm focused on meditating in the word, praying, talking to God every day. That's what it's called, being set apart not being of this world and we can continue to do these things effectively y'all if we operating with what the holy spirit that's why we're talking about these fruits right so come on y'all let's keep our peace out here the scriptures tell us second peter the lord is not slow in keeping his promise as some understand slowness instead he is patient with you not wanting anyone to perish but everyone to come to repentance. So this leads to the fourth one, patience. Trusting in his timing. Remaining steadfast in your face. Patience, 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 y'all. Stop rushing into things. When you rush into things, that means you're trying to allow your will to be done instead of God's will, right? What about God's will? He brought us here to depend on him and allow his will to be done for our protection. We be trying to rush into things, y'all, and it gets us into trouble. That's because we are operating with that flesh. Patience. That's why patience is a fruit of the Spirit. What are you rushing towards? Ask yourself that question. What are you rushing towards in the sense of you feel like you don't have what you need right now? God got everything for you. He's the provider. He's providing for you always. So there is nothing you're lacking. You got to know that. God won't leave you hanging out here. Where's your trust? What are you rushing towards? Ask yourself this question. Is it the money? I hope not. Don't chase after money. Chase after purpose. Also in the scriptures, you can't serve two masters. You can't serve both God and money. A lot of people rushing towards money, not even understanding that they're not even ready for it. God knows what you're ready for. He knows. He knows you better than anybody else. He already knows what he has set ahead in the future for you. So why are you rushing? Why are you being impatient? Just wait. Just wait on it. Trust the Lord with all your heart, your mind, and your soul. That's the best commandment. And if you over here rushing, you freaking out. You're trying to get things your own way. That, 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 that makes it seem like that your truth is better than his truth. Come on, y'all. It's all about God's truth. It's all about God's will. And we have to have patience in order to keep the peace. We have to have patience in order to keep the self-control. And that's also another fruit that we're going to get into. Sometimes, y'all, it's okay to get these journals. It's okay to get these journals and write things down. I keep a journal for me so I can keep track of my spiritual progress. Right? I'm writing down. My Bible, like I got a Bible plan. I'll be writing that down to keep track of that. I'll be writing my dreams down to keep track of that. Right? Just continue to write in your journal just so you can keep track. And you know what I'm saying? You can go back to it, not forgetting anything. You can look at your progress. How you doing? So write down some things that you feel like you uh, don't have. Be, but this requires you to be honest with yourself, though. You got to be honest with yourself and you got to be honest with God. You be honest with God when it comes to everything. So when it comes to you, to you being impatient, write down what you feel like you are impatient with and then bring it to God. 
Talk to him about it. Just ask him, like, what do I, what do you need me to understand in this time right now? What am I missing, God? Just talk to him. And he's going to give you that. And you're going to become much that much more patient the more you continue to see God in these times of you being impatient. That's that's the opportunity right there. That's the opportunity for us to be more like Christ in any times of trouble. We ask God, can you just help me be more like Christ in this situation? Right? Yes, sir, indeed. Let's continue. It tells us in Ephesians, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other. And as in Christ forgave you. So this leads to the fifth fruit of the spirit and that's kindness. So we got to give, we got to forgive y'all. We got to forgive. Even though being on this path, following Christ, being set apart, we deal with so much spiritual warfare and so many people that us operating with demons. We got to forgive them. We were forgiven, so we got to do the same. And we don't want to, uh, we don't want to continue to have that, that heart of hate, that grudge. You gonna block your blessings like that. You got to heal, you got to forgive, right? Because you're not doing it for these people, you're doing it for you. You're doing it out of obedience for the Father, right? You gotta forgive. So it's just like, since you are set free, since you are set free through Christ, people gonna hate you now. That's how the world is, y'all told you. There's nothing new under the sun. People are gonna hate you. But you got to understand you're protected. And you got to understand that when you forgive, it's allowing you to keep your peace. Because life goes on. I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know what they did to you. But life goes on. You don't know what they doing. They probably on to the next person. And you're going to allow them to hold you back from moving forward in your journey. You're going to allow these people who you're not even dealing with no more to hold you back and block your blessings. I think not. It's time to forgive, y'all. It's time to forgive. And I know it may be hard for some of you, but it's nothing too hard when it comes to Christ. So you got to allow Christ to help you heal. Christ can heal anything. You got to understand that Christ can heal anything. All of the miracles that I told you he did, he was healing the sick, curing the blind, raising the dead. And you think he can't heal you in the things that you've been through? Come on, man. It don't make sense. He can heal anything. There is nothing impossible when it comes to the most high God. So just forgive and continue to move forward. There's so many blessings ahead for you. It's a light at the end of the tunnel with this. So don't keep thinking back in the past. Also in the scripture, it says that God will avenge you. So we don't retaliate when we receive this hate, right, chosen ones? Because we are a light out here. With being a light, you attract darkness. The darkness don't like what you're doing out here. In the scriptures, it tells us we don't battle against flesh and blood. We battle against the evil, the wickedness, the principalities out here. The demons out here. So we have to continue to understand that we got to protect our heart, not changing our heart, keeping it pure, still being this light, still being forgivable as Christ forgave us, man. Let's continue. It tells us in Matthew, let your light shine before others, like I just said, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven. So this leads to the sixth fruit, which is goodness. And that's all about seeking to do good and live life that reflects the goodness of God. Sharing his love and light and light with other people, y'all. And we do that by consistently being the light, by consistently being examples of Christ, giving people opportunity, right? God has given everybody a chance. And since we decided to be set free, since we decided to accept what Christ did, dying for our sins, come on, y'all. Now we have to also oper operate with this Holy Spirit, bringing other people out of darkness, bringing other people free from Satan so that they can also experience the goodness of the Most High God. So that they can also be embraced by Christ as he loves everyone. Got his arms out 
just ready to embrace you if you come to him. Right? In the scriptures, it says, Seek and ye shall find. Knock on that door, and it shall be up and done, and it should be opened unto you. Now the thing is, y'all, it's a lot of people out here not seeking God. It's a lot of people out here not doing that. A lot of people ain't knocking on that door. But us, if we show this goodness, right? By helping people, by so many ways, giving our testimony, doing acts of kindness, sharing the good news, planting the seeds, they can have that opportunity to experience this goodness too, man. I keep telling y'all on this path, y'all, we can't be selfish. God is blessing us so that we can also bless other people. Why you think God is still allowing so many things to go on? The Most High God is in control of everything, right? Like I said before, he controls everything that goes on. So why not just slap his fingers like Thanos and just cut all of this foolishness out? He's a loving God. He's a forgiving father. He's slow to anger. So he's given a lot of these people who's still in a dark place, who's still in their evil and wicked ways, he's in evil and wicked ways, he's still giving them opportunities to come over here to this side so that they can receive this love, this goodness. We can help that because we operating with the Holy Spirit, operating with these fruits, right? So let's put them to use. Let's put them to you, y'all. Let's continue. The scriptures tell us in Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, but the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil. So this leads to the seventh fruit, which is faithfulness. And that's all about remaining faithful to God in all circumstances, right? Trusting in his promises and relying on his strength, right? So we set apart. We were set free. We got this freedom. We operating with the Holy Spirit. Now it's just like, it's not going to be perfect now. Life ain't going to be perfect since you made that decision. Right? So it's like we have to every single day continue to rely on his strength. What are we doing? What are we What are we relying on? We can't rely on ourselves, y'all. That's not, that's not how this role is meant to be. It's not meant to be traveled alone. It's not meant for you to rely on yourselves. It's all about relying on God's strength, relying on his faithfulness, knowing that he's protecting you, giving you everything you need to stay strong so that you can continue to live out your purpose effectively. Right. In all circumstances, do you know your promises? I mean, do you know God's promises for you? That's why you got to meditate in his word, man. But you got to do that for yourselves, though, y'all. You can't receive all of these things from another man. Also in the scriptures, don't put your trust in man. It's better to put your confidence and your trust in the Lord. That's where you're going to get your real strength. That's how you're going to continue to grow in your faith, grow spiritually. That's the only way, y'all. You're not going to get it from this world. The world has nothing to offer you anymore. Now that you, took, now that you decided to wake up to that call, now that you are free, through Christ, the world has nothing to offer you. Your flesh has nothing to offer you but that Holy Spirit. But that presence from God, that strength from God, that full armor from God. But are you praying for that every day? I'm talking about every day, y'all, no lacking. We got to do this every day. We got to get this strength every day because Satan, he work every day. Every day, y'all, he after you. He does not want you doing these things, man. He is trying to bring as many people to hell with him. Misery loves company, remember? So we got to stay on it. We got to continue to be faithful. But faith is dead without works. So we have to put these fruits to work. We have to not be afraid. We have to go out. Put our faith to work, right? Yes, sir. Indeed. Let's continue. The scriptures tell us in Ephesians, be completely humble and gentle, be patient, bearing with one another in love. So this talks about the eighth fruit, which is gentleness, right? And that's all about showing humility in our interactions with others, reflecting the character of Christ with our words and with our actions. 
So it's all about staying humble, y'all. It's all about being humble. See, there's a lot of people in this world that are very prideful. You know, like those narcissists. There's a lot of people that wants to control you. We don't do that over here on this side. We stay humble. Knowing that everything that we get to do is because of the Most High God, not our own strength. In the scriptures, it tells us pride leads to your destruction. It leads to your downfall. Right? So it's just like we have to show that we are human. We have to show God that we are humble with our words, with our actions, right? That's the best way. Actions speak louder than words, right? So it's just like we most definitely pray every day. We pray without ceasing. But actions speak louder than words, y'all. We got to show God that we stand humble. Being thankful in all circumstances. Because the moment we tend to slack off and forget who's giving us the strength, who's on our side in this journey, that's where it gets bad, man. Because now Satan going to come back in, start messing with your mind because you're not doing it as much anymore. You're not thanking God in all circumstances as much. You're not meditating in your word as much. You're not praying as much. We got to do this every day, y'all. We in a daily battle. This is spiritual warfare we in. We at war. Every day we at war. So every day, Satan is most definitely going to try to bring you things in this world, use people to try to get you to go back into your old ways. To try to get you to go back into relying on yourself. Which is going to lead to your downfall. I'm going to tell you again. The best commandment. He made this the best commandment. They said it in the word. That this is the first and the best for a reason. God do everything for a reason. And that's to depend on him. With our heart, mind and soul. And that keeps you humble. Y'all feel what I'm saying? Let's continue. It tells us in 2 Timothy. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. We're talking about that Holy Spirit, right? So that leads to self-control. And that's all about relying on the Holy Spirit to keep us from temptation. And that's very important, y'all. To keep us from temptation. To keep us out of bondage with sin. To keep us allowing us to die to ourselves daily. Picking up our cross daily. We do that with the power of the Holy Spirit. But we have to put forth work. We have to make sacrifices. We have to cut people off. There's certain things that we must do because God gives us everything we need to do it. Right? Christ died for our sins. That gave us the opportunity to even repent. We wouldn't be here if he didn't do this, y'all. We wouldn't be able to be set free like we are if he didn't die for our sins. It tells us in scripture, the only way to the Father is through Christ. We accepted that call. You accepted the call. You decided that you wanted to be set free because of what Christ did. Now that you did that, you have to stay away from temptation. You have to be obedient. You have to put forth the effort to do these things because Satan, he got pissed off when you left his side. Satan don't want people set free. He want people in chains chained up in a sin chained up in this darkness chained up with no hope chained up with no love chained up with fear confusion all of these wicked nasty evil things y'all because that's what satan is all about but we are no longer of that anymore so with certain changes and it's certain things that you will experience but it's nothing too nothing too hard for you to overcome because of who on your side, remember? Who on your side? The Most High God. Christ, the conqueror of this world who beat death for us. And what we're talking about today, what we operating with, what we want to overflow, the Holy Spirit. So y'all hear all of these fruits that we talked about? Come on, y'all. Meditate on each one. Ask God to help you. Ask God to help you produce these fruits, all of the fruits, the best way possible for you. He going to do it. And the more you continue to ask for this help, the more you continue to strive to produce these fruits. Come on, y'all. The more spiritual growth, which is the real blessing. The more your faith continues to stay strong, which is the real blessing. 
the more you will continue to fulfill your purpose, which is why you're here. You got everything you need, you feel me? Yes, sir, indeed. Now I'm gonna repeat all nine of the fruits, y'all. All nine of the fruits. Come on, y'all, we set free. We got to produce these fruits. Number one was love. Number two, joy. Number three is peace. Number four is patience. Number five is kindness. Number six is goodness. Number seven is faithfulness. Number eight is gentleness. And number nine is self-control. And we got everything we need. Come on, y'all. But it's not gonna happen like that, y'all. What's the fruit? Patience. It's gonna take time. Allow God to work with you. But you have to continue to seek him. You have to continue to obey him in order for these things to work. All right, Slice and Dice gang. All right, Chosen Ones. Yes, sir, indeed. Now, if y'all still here, I love y'all, man. Smash the like button. Subscribe to your boy. Share this video. Help support. You say you, 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 say you support the channel? Where your work set, all right? I love y'all, man, for still being here. I really do. Now, it's something else that I got to do. I do this at the end of my videos. I like to give y'all an opportunity to say something out loud. Give you an opportunity to say this out loud so it can be heard. That real victory, ending up in eternity with the Heavenly Father, that's what it's all about. I'm not forcing you to do it. This is up to you. But now is the time. Repeat after me. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he died for my sins. I believe he rose from the grave and is now in heaven with our heavenly father. And I want him to be Lord of my life. Now let me tell you something. If you just repeated that, that was the best decision you ever made in your life. Facts. God is watching you. He saw that. The angels in heaven. They saw it too. They up there turned up. It's a party up there right now. Facts, man. So keep that energy. The devil heard you. Yeah, he heard you, but he's a loser. He's a coward. He has no power over you. You're not on his side anymore, right? You set free. All you got to do is depend on God with your heart, your mind, and soul. The best commandment. All you got to do is to continue using your gifts and talents, serving other people. You're here for a reason. Allow him to help you. All you got to do is continue meditating in this word. Feed this Holy Spirit, which is what we talked about today. We want that to overflow. That's going to keep us that's going to keep us in alignment with God's will the best way possible. He got you, man. So I'm going to tell you again, y'all, I'm going to need you to keep this energy. You going to get the victory out here. All right? Yes, sir, indeed. Slice and dice gang, it's that time. Chosen ones, it's that time. I'm going to need y'all to bring it on in cuz now I got Three more things to give you. Oh yeah, ain't done. Just three. It ain't gonna be long. Listen up. Oh, 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 I'ma need y'all to have a nice. I said, oh, oh, oh. I'ma need you to have a blessed. But as far as y'all's blessings, have you asked for? Have you asked for all of the blessings that God got for you today? If not, do it right now. What you waiting on? He wants you to receive them. Cardo do, I do, facts. So it's only right that you do. You know what I'm saying? And I got one more thing for you, and that's to have a B E A. -E -E. I said, you default. 
<laughs> you feel me? I sure hope so, man. Peace out. God bless to all. And remember, you set free now. You answered the call. We set free through Christ, right? We ain't on that side of the world no more. We operating with this Holy Spirit. We operating with the fruits of the Spirit. For it is the best thing to do for our journeys. Slice and dice gang, chosen ones, continue to meditate in your word. Continue to use your gifts and talents. Ain't no lacking over here. Y'all know how we do. And continue to pray for yourselves daily. But not just for yourselves. We're not selfish over here. Pray for those around you because prayer works. Now everybody, let's continue to do everything in our power. Bringing more people to the kingdom. I'm out of here.